What's that's up? confidential. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Got you there, didn't I? <laughs> <That's good me. laughs> I, I mean, I, like I say, maybe I'm not reinventing the wheel. Maybe this has been talked about before in the past. Is that a question of logistics or perhaps something that might come in the future? Well, I think it could very well um, come in the future. But I mean, I th- it's something that, uh, as we said earlier on, Simon is Mr. Pop, uh, and he prefers to to deal in that kind of Westlife or Paul Potts or whatever in the mainstream. I think that he wouldn't perhaps be that comfortable with the whole rock thing you know because he's not Mr. Rock he's Mr. Pop he uh, doesn't bang his head but or get the devil horns out never no no, no <laughs> oh no, I'd love a no. picture of so Simon going like that <laughs> rocking out <laughs> yeah. but he's but of course he's had to embrace it in the sense of the David Cooks of the world and the, the, yeah. the recognise that these the, you know that these people get votes on the show and, and yeah. win them you know you know um, what I love sometimes on American Idol particularly with Cara on the panel this year oh, you, ha- you had um, uh, some of the towards the end you get a real rock and tune going on because of Adam on the stage and you had Randy kind of going like this and the, both the girls are set up going like this and there's Simon <laughs> no, that's you know, right. totally motionless. No, yeah. Absolutely not even tapping a toe. <laughs> no, I know, but that, Where does that he is feel the it? way. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe he's just a little bit out of his comfort zone now. I mean, there's no mystery about it, and he said it himself in plenty of press things that that you know it's not his bag. He won't go out and buy a saying a stars good in, but he won't go out. You know, he didn't like Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin, the people like that. You know, it's just not his bag. Yeah. What if so his girlfriend gonna... really got Randy? listening to music like that do you think he'd play it <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he is quite a lover boy isn't he where's the girlfriend is he hiding her behind a curtain because he's very mysterious and so are you and I'm going to get to that in just a moment <laughs> well, look, Simon's a single guy now at the moment and um, uh, and he's enjoying his freedom. I mean, um, he has this relationship, as you know, you've read about it so with Terry Seymour and um, they've split, uh, but they're they're very happy together. <laughs> they're split. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, it all works and, and um, you know, he looks after and uh, it, somehow it works even though they're separated. But he's enjoying his newfound freedom and yes, there's the odd night to a string fellas or whatever. But, um, a little lap oh, dance. You know, Simon's not a, you know, Again, he said all this himself. He doesn't need me to say it. That he doesn't want to get married and doesn't want kids. Mm. Cut. Mm-hmm. Nothing's going to change. No one will ever talk him round to getting married. No one will ever talk him round to having kids. Mm-hmm. Maybe a puppy or a terrapin. <laughs> <laughs> he said about you, he said in this article, same article I quoted at the beginning, Tony's maybe not as driven as me, but he was always more creative, writing poems and articles <laughs> and getting published. He's successful but he's more relaxed with it. Is yeah, Simon not relaxed with his success, do you think? Is that, what is he? Well, not relaxed um, is one way of putting it, but he's he, he still wants more. It's about the whole competitive spirit with Simon. He has to be bigger than Simon Fuller. He has to have more money than Sir Philip Green. That's just his thing. That's what drives him. Um, where, yes, uh, I suppose I am more creative. I'm happier in that arena and I'm not a businessman so I don't go out and uh, you, you and don't sh- you thing. don't shout from the mountaintops your success for example how many books have you sold because it must be a lot <laughs> well, I can't say that but you know <laughs> I, I, I've sold quite a few books and I'm very happy to do that and I'm now actually uh, I said that I wouldn't do a book this year another book uh, certainly uh, that's um, celebrity uh, kind of based but um, I, I got involved with a guy a couple of weeks a guy called Norman Shepard do you know who Norman Shepard is? Don't. No. Well, Norman Shepard was the guy that discovered Queen. No way. And how he did this was that was that Norman and his brother ran Trident Studios in the 60s yeah. and 70s, yeah. which is where Hey Jude was cut, yeah. along with changes by David Bowie. Um, Harry Nilsson did his stuff there, Elton John. Everybody went to Trident Studios. Well, so Norman's got a tremendous sort of vein he's tapping into musical history there. So many anecdotes to tell about Hey Jude recording there or whatever it is but the main story really is about this bunch of guys come in not called Queen I think they were called Smile were they before that I'm not sure, yeah, I'm not sure. Paul will know hey Paul can you can you tap in on that do you know yeah, I think it's Smile they were called so this bunch of guys come in with some the uh, front singer front guy being slightly um, you know <laughs> out there <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he suddenly thought to himself these guys could be big and so you know, for the next sort of two years he pays them a salary which was unheard of in those days to pay musicians and uh, and he took them on tour and gradually gradually built this band into Queen so that book is kind of like hard for me not to write mm. uh, with Norman so I, I may well do that 
Would that be an experience that you'd like, for example, obviously now with your involvement with Fame Games? For example, if you came across, we know some of the bands that you like and some of the artists, but if all of a sudden you thought to yourself, hold on, now these guys are going to make it and I'm going to back them as well and take you know, your involvement with Fame Games one step further, would that be something that you'd do? It's something that I'm looking at the whole time, Sid, absolutely. And the more I've got involved over the last almost a year, DJ, that... Um, that I've got closer to the heart of the matter here and I can't ignore what my heart tells me to do. If I like an artist, I, I, I have to say it. I have to shout them out as I do. And so uh, then I watch the wheels turning. I watch what other, as no such things I think I said yesterday to you um, off air, that, that um, to me there's no such thing as a, as a one-hit wonder. I'm not interested in that. Yeah. And I don't think, I think it's just, in the same way, you can't have an author who just writes one book. There's got to be another book in him to get a publishing, a, a good publishing deal and a great advance and a, and a whole new future. And it's no different for an artist, I think, indie or otherwise. They've got to be able to write not just one hit song, they've got to have an album and the second album and the third album. So I'm watching these people um, as to what their material, how quickly the new material comes up. That's the key to it for me. Gee, how clever is he? <laughs> well, clever. I mean, it's just common sense. But you know, as I say, because I'm not, uh, I'm not Mr. Pop. Uh, you know, I do love this music that Simon doesn't. So there is a yeah. balance here. And but, but the same thing, the same commercial aspects are the same. I have to be looking for the people, indie artists, that are able to write an album or two. So come on, kids. Where are those, <laughs> where's those new songs I keep asking for? <laughs> When you were a wee little boy, what was that first thing when mom and dad said, uh, what are you going to be when you grow up? What was the first thing you said? Well, of course, you know, uh, the first thing I said is I want to be an actor. And mother said, oh, no, no, no. What if you don't work? You know, uh, it's a terrible business to be. And she yeah. was terrified of, uh, of um, me going into that. Well, in the end, I did. And I went to stage school because uh, I needed to sort this out. Mm. Um, and again, a little bit like Simon, I had two choices that I thought. Uh, I'll either be an actor or I'll be a writer. And I did my drama thing didn't work as mum said very much <laughs> and um, then I was at film studios and stuff like that and, and learning the sort of business of, of what was going on and then eventually I started as Simon said uh, writing uh, of, uh, weird poems and stuff and such this, but, um, and then um, fi finding my way in, into journalism and finding that writing really was the, the how I was going to get rid of my creative uh, burn. What was your first poem do you remember? No I don't can you <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. Can you recite it? Though? No I can't. Oh, it, no, I can't. It, it, I literally, I put all that away. Exactly. But um, it was. You a, write poems for Emma. Roses are red. <laughs> I'm sure she's there. Violets alive. are blue. No. Put her on. Put her on. Put her on. What's for my dinner tomorrow, Emma? <laughs> Who do you absolutely hate? in the industry that you've met in the last, say, 10 years since Simon's catapulted to worldwide fame? Well, there's DJ Cryer. <laughs> there's Sid, Don't there's you Graham dare. Keeley. No, really, somebody that just doesn't have a nice thing to say about Simon or the shows or, or maybe is just um, not appreciative of all the efforts that's gone into. Because, you know, nobody becomes a Simon Cowell without a hell of a lot of courage you know, chutzpah, as they say, says, and hard work. Yeah, I mean, just just, just uh, always a reminder about uh, keeping on the Simon thing for a second is that, you know, he, he was very reluctant to go in front of a camera. You know, he had to be, in the end, dragged screaming and shouting in front of the pop idol. And if you look at pop idol, the early ones are, are out there, he is as stiff as a board. Mm. Mm. He's completely wooden. Mm. I mean, you mind me saying that. Will you, Simon? <laughs> um, but you know, so he had to quickly work out how he's going to be, what, what his persona was on screen, and obviously was helped with that with producer, with the right producers. But you know, he, he didn't want to do that. You know, he was looking at the whole bigger picture. All he saw at the time of going on Pop Idol was, uh, okay, I can get a, a ready-made artist who the public already know by being on television. Yeah, I get that. That's so him. Let me ask you a question here. I mean, some articles that I've read, uh, and obviously talking to you over the last few days. Off air. Uh, you're actually a very close family from what I'm getting. You know, I could be wrong, but that's that's the feeling I'm getting. Um, you're his elder brother. When people sort of slag Simon off, is it this instinctual sort of um, you know protection for my younger brother that kicks in? And who's in? doing it? Because I still haven't had the answer to my question. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> I will.